Hello students, I am Dr. Nidhi Gupta. I am from the Center for Population, Health and Development, School of Development Studies at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. I welcome you to the module on Impact of HIV on Mortality. It falls under the paper Population and Health. The main objective of this module is to develop a basic understanding of HIV and AIDS, its prevalence, transmission, trends and its impact on mortality globally and in developing countries like India. Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, that is AIDS, was first recognized as a disease in 1981, which is caused due to HIV, that is Human Immunodeficiency Virus. It is a retrovirus that attacks the immune system, which in our body is the natural defense against illness. The virus destroys T helper cells, which are a type of white blood cells in the immune system and make copies of itself inside these cells. AIDS is a communicable disease as the HIV can spread by coming in contact with certain body fluids of infected persons like blood, semen, periseminal fluids, rectal fluids, vaginal fluids and breast milk. The rapid spread of the disease in most of the countries and regions like sub-Saharan Africa, some other developing countries has led to an escalating demand for care by those infected and a need to deal with the social and economic consequences of the high levels of mor morbidity and mortality associated with this disease. HIV is a retrovirus that destroys the CD4 cells which are a type of white blood cells in the immune system which gradually breaks down a person's immune system. This means that someone living with HIV who is not receiving treatment will find it harder and harder to fight off with other infections and diseases. If HIV is left untreated, it may take up to 10 to 15 years for the immune system to be so severely damaged that it can no longer defend itself at all. However, the speed of HIV progress will vary depending on the age, health and various socio-cultural and contextual factors. Scientists' understanding of how the HIV virus uses CD cells to replicate or make its own copies and spreads throughout the body have helped them design various anti-retroviral anti drugs. Now let us look at HIV transmission. HIV is found in the blood fluids of a person living with HIV and the transmission may occur if sufficient quantity of these blood fluids gets into another person's bloodstream. HIV infected cells may be found throughout the body including in the blood, brain and intestine. Unprotected sexual intercourse is the commonest mode of HIV transmission. Even when HIV treatment has suppressed the level of HIV in blood plasma over a long period of time, HIV can still be found in viral reservoirs in blood and lymphoid tissue. If HIV treatment is stopped, HIV will replicate again. AIDS is a set of symptoms or syndrome caused by HIV virus. A person is said to have AIDS when their immune system is too weak to fight off infection and they develop certain defining symptoms and illnesses. This is the last stage of HIV when the infection is very advanced and if left untreated will lead to death. However, all people with HIV do not necessarily progress to AIDS. Effective ART or the antiretroviral treatment slows the replication of virus restores the immune function and prevents the development of opportunist infections. The timing and occurrence of opportunistic infections, the response of the immune system and the response of treatment vary from person to person. Now let us look at the management of HIV. Existing treatments cannot completely remove HIV from the body. HIV hides in viral reservoirs in various parts of the body of the human host. If the treatment stops or is interrupted, HIV can re-establish itself by leaking out 
these reservoirs. A combination of three or four antiretroviral drugs is taken to treat HIV. Each antiretroviral drug class targets a different step in the life cycle of HIV. Combining drugs from different drug classes provides an effective way to prevent replication of virus than a single drug. The antiretroviral treatment helps in achieving detectable viral load in the blood or body fluids. This prevents damage in the immune system and consequent illness. The lower levels of HIV also significantly reduce the chances of onward HIV transmission. Now let us look at prevalence and mortality due to HIV. According to the UN AIDS fact sheet of 2015, there were 36.7 million people living with HIV globally, including 1.8 million children. About 1.1 million people died from HIV-related illnesses and 2.1 million people became newly infected with HIV and about 1,50,000 of which were children. Nearly 78 million people have become infected with HIV since the start of the epidemic and 35 million have died from HIV-AIDS related illness since then. Therefore, HIV-AIDS is one of the major burdens of disease globally. India has the third largest HIV epidemic in the world. HIV prevalence in India was estimated to be 0.26% of the Indian population, which equates to about 2.1 million people living with HIV in India and an estimated 68,000 people who died of HIV-related illness in 2015. Now let us see how the HIV pandemic has progressed over the years. The global HIV pandemic has advanced through three phases during which HIV AIDS mortality has increased from 4.73 per 1 lakh in 1995 to 16.18 per lakh in 2015. In 1995, HIV was the 39th ranked cause of death, while in 2015, now it is the 11th rank cause of death worldwide. Globally, HIV incidence reached its peak in 1997 at 3.3 million new infections last year. From 2005 to 2015, the number of people living with HIV increased by 0.8% per year and the global incidence has remained relatively stable at about 2.5 to 2.6 million per year reaching to a total of 36.7 million people living with HIV globally in 2015. Now let us look at the HIV trends. According to the Global Burden of Disease study conducted in 2015, it shows that HIV deaths have been declining since the mid-2000s. However, the study also indicated that HIV death rates and recent trends vary greatly across countries as also it varies substantially by factors like age, differential rates of progression by sex and age, and differential ART coverage. For example, more women than men died in people aged 15 to 29 years, while after the ages of 35, there were more deaths in men. In the past 15 years, the global community has provided 109.8 billion US dollars of developmental assistance to curb the HIV and AIDS epidemic. As a result, HIV mortality has declined overall in low-income and middle-income countries since 2004. Although death rates and incidents declined in the past decade in many of these countries, they are increasing in many others where prevalence has been lower until now, such as Indonesia and the Philippines. Now let us look at the impact of HIV and AIDS on mortality. The impact of HIV on mortality differs by sex. Males are projected to experience 6 million more excess deaths than females over the period between 2000 to 2020. But the percentage in increase 
over the no age scenario will be higher for females to the extent of 16.9% more than males which is 16.4%. However, the similarity of the impact by sex at the aggregate level masks considerably considerable variation by region. In the affected countries of Africa, females are expected to experience 7 million more excess deaths than males, while in the affected countries of Asia, AIDS deaths to males will likely exceed those to females by 10 million. In the affected countries of Latin America and Caribbean countries, males are expected to experience a higher number of excess deaths than females, but in relative terms, females are expected to experience 10.2% more deaths than in the no-age scenario, whereas for males, the equivalent percentage is 9.9%. In the two affected countries of the developed world, that is the Russian Federation and the United States, the number of excess deaths among males is expected to be more than twice as high as that of females, according to the United Nations report. Now let us understand why there is a differing impact by region. This difference arises because there are different assumptions about the sex ratio of transmission over the course of the epidemic, which reflects current pattern in the relative susceptibility to infection by sex, because AIDS affects mostly persons in the reproductive ages, it has a very noticeable impact at the age distribution of deaths, raising those among adults aged 25 to 49 and reducing the number of deaths at advanced ages in general 65 and over because less people survive that long. There is also some excess mortality among younger age groups that is 16 million deaths under age of 15 and nearly 5 million among those in the age of 15 to 24 and among those aged 50 to 64 which is 7 million but the bulk of the AIDS impact is concentrated among the ages of 25 to 49. Indeed, deaths to those aged 25 to 49 account for about 20% of all deaths in the projections with AIDS instead of 11% expected according to the no age scenario. Among those aged 65 or over, in contrast, the number of deaths in the projections that incorporate AIDS is lower than the no age scenario because very few people survive to the age of 65 or over when AIDS is present. Now let us look at an important aspect of mortality which is infant and child mortality due to HIV. HIV AIDS affects infants and children who acquire the disease from their infected mothers during pregnancy and delivery or through breastfeeding. In the absence of treatment, about one third of the children born to HIV positive women acquire the infection from their mothers. The prevalence of HIV in infants and children affect mortality in childhood. It is currently estimated that almost two-thirds of HIV-positive children survive past their first birthday. Consequently, in the countries affected by HIV-AIDS epidemic, its effect on mortality in childhood is greater on mortality rates between the ages of 1 to 5 than the infant mortality that is below the age of 1. Furthermore, because women who are HIV positive have on average lower fertility than other women, the overall impact of the epidemic on children is dampened. Thus, even taking into account the effect of AIDS, infant mortality by all the affected countries declined from 70 deaths per 1000 births in 1990-95 to 24 deaths per 1000 births in 2045-2050 to based on the projections. The effect of AIDS on infant mortality is strongest in the affected countries of Africa where AIDS is expected to cause infant mortality to be higher by 5 deaths per 1000 births than in the no AIDS scenario. 
In all other regions, the effect of AIDS on infant mortality is small, although in relative terms, it is moderate on the all, already very low infant mortality of the two developed countries affected by the epidemic, implying that AIDS is likely to be responsible for a 5-6% to 6 increase in their infant mortality after 2010. Now let us look at the effect of AIDS on under 5 mortality. The effect of AIDS on under 5 mortality is more marked than on infant mortality. But just as in the case of infant mortality, AIDS is not projected to reverse the declining trend in the under 5 mortality at the regional level. For the group of all the affected countries, under 5 mortality is projected to be 7.8 percent higher in 2000 to 2005 than it would be without AIDS as compared to an excess of 2.2 percent for infant mortality. Although the relative impact of AIDS is expected to increase to 13.3 percent by 2050, by the time under 5 mortality is projected to be nearly two-thirds lower than in 2005. As expected, the effect of AIDS on under 5 mortality is particularly high in the affected countries of Africa where 19 additional child deaths per 1000 births are expected in 2005 than it would have been without AIDS. But even for the affected countries of Africa, under 5 mortality is expected to decline from 161 deaths per 1000 births to 53 deaths per 1000 births between 2005 to 2050. For the affected countries in all other regions, the absolute effect of AIDS on under 5 mortality is considerably smaller with the result that significant reductions of mortality in childhood are projected even in the presence of AIDS. The AIDS epidemic is also having an impact on mortality rates between ages 5 to 15 years. According to the survivorship estimate for children infected by HIV used in projecting the impact of the disease, about 40% of the infected children survive to their 5th birthday and more than 10% will survive to their 10th birthday. Because non-AIDS mortality at these ages is extremely low, the relative impact of AIDS mortality on the AIDS specific deaths at ages 5 to 9 and 10 to 14 is quite large. Now let us look at another important dimension of TB HIV co-infection and its impact on mortality. Tuberculosis is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality among people living with HIV, including those receiving ART treatment. Among HIV AIDS deaths in 2015, about 17.8 percent were caused by HIV and tuberculosis co-infection, which is down from 17.6 deaths in 2005. All the people living with HIV newly infected with TB should start tuberculosis treatment and ART within 8 weeks of starting the tuberculosis treatment regardless of their CD4 count. The people with both HIV and tuberculosis with profound immunosuppression should receive antiretroviral therapy within the first 2 weeks of initiating the tuberculosis treatment. Intensified tuberculosis case finding and access to quality diagnosis and treatment of tuberculosis in accordance with international or national guidelines are essential to improve the quality and quantity of life of people living with HIV. There are many uncertainties in projecting the prevalence. In considering this assessment of demographic impact of HIV, it should be borne in mind that there is much uncertainty surrounding both the estimates of prevalence of the disease in different populations and the path that the endemic will follow in future. Furthermore, more needs to be known about the dynamics of epidemic itself. For example, it is not certain that the progression from HIV infection to AIDS and from AIDS to death will occur according to the same model schedule in all population or even most populations 
in geographical regions. If fertility is considerably lower among HIV positive women, available estimates of HIV prevalence may be downwardly biased. Hence, to conclude, we can say that remarkable progress has been made in curbing the HIV AIDS epidemic worldwide. HIV incidence reached its peak in 1997 and HIV deaths have been declining since the mid-2000. However, annual incidence has stayed relatively cons constant since 2005. The need for HIV programs, particularly ART programs, continues to grow because of both sustained high incidence of infection and success of ART in extending the lifespan of people living with HIV. Increases in mortality, particularly at the ages of 25 to 49, have been common, result in outright reduction in life expectancy. Although prevalence is estimated to have already peaked in many countries, the major impact of AIDS in terms of increased mortality is expected to become more serious over the medium term future. Governments and the international community and civil society urgently need to raise people's awareness of the seriousness of the AIDS epidemic and take actions necessary to produce the behavioral changes. Thank you.